really gradual, but just a... Uh, Braemar Road heading towards Lake Pukaki and there's lots of big mountains ahead partially hidden in the clouds so it's pretty awesome scenery it's all open country out here there's a warning sign on this road saying that logging truck to use the road various warnings about that I don't know I don't know what the hell they're logging around here because there sure ain't much forest just lots of grassland, lots of lupins, lupins off there to the right. Oh boy, that's the mountains. It's just nothing like this in Australia, I tell you. The mountains. Stunning. Having a great time on a quiet road, hardly any traffic. It's a little bit windy, pretty cool air up here, but very enjoyable. Okay. Only doing about 45 kilometres. Really not too taxing, but this road's had a Three or four short, sharp pinches that have tested us. Bottom gear, just grunting up through all the gravel. But we're getting there. The Lake Pukaki. In the valley. And the last bit of the, the descent to Lake Tekapo. It's a long run. Not Lake Tekapo, running down the last bit of the descent to Lake Pukaki, I meant. It's fairly gradual, but just a very loose rocky surface, so you've got to watch it. Seems to never end. going good. getting there good off you go <laughs> nearly at the t-junction somewhere out of the 
win. All set to move on. Final lunch spot. You reckon? Mm. Up this way? Just come up to the Pukaki Tail Race. <clears throat> Where the water from Lake Tekapo, having been funneled along the Pukaki Canal for 25 30 kilometres, gets diverted down these pipes. Huge pipes they are, too. Bloody huge. And they go into the power station, which is just over here. Hydroelectric power station. Oh boy. Yes, they. Probably one of the most scenic power stations I've ever seen. The Tekapo B power station. Built back in 1977. Two thirds of the building is underwater. It takes all the water from the Pukaki Canal, which comes down from Lake Tekapo, in those huge pipes, penstock they call it, that runs down into the power station. You're not allowed to camp here, dear. No. no, we'll ride on. Well, where do we? We'll find a campsite further on. Is this the cycle trail? No, 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 no. Where's the cycle trail? That's another five kilometres further on. We're going to oh. start. Oh. We're going to ride on Seal Road, yeah. I don't know whether you can make it out on this uh, screen, but this is where we plan to camp. And there is an absolutely awesome view of Mount Cook, way over in the tip out there. Peak of Mount Cook, clear and pristine. <laughs> Seriously, it has got to be one of the most impressive views on the whole South Island. It's probably why they've got this great picnic spot there. It's Mount Cook, lit up by the sun, standing proud. And we're right here by Lake Pukaki, enjoying this spectacular view and Matthew's settled down for breakfast we're not supposed to be here but we weren't here because nobody saw our tents well we've just come down to the coast the shoreline of Lake Bukaki yesterday had a beautiful campsite right on the lake and uh, now we're heading for Twizel or Twizzle, I reckon it should be pronounced, but anyway, they tell me that the New Zealand pronunciation is Twizel, uh, a town, apparently a town with fairly good facilities. It's about eight kilometres away from us now. We're just here entering what's called the Pukaki Flats, which is all, as you can see, lots of uh, pine plantation. And uh, yeah, it's got nice thorns on it, this one. There's only about eight to go. I haven't seen Matthew, I don't know where he is. He'll catch us. <laughs> Heading for Twizel. The suspect is over where those tall trees are, poplars. Way over to the right. So I think we're going to make right turns soon. Well, this is uh, crossing the Pukaki Flats. A lot of the pine forests has sort of disappeared very open country. There are pines growing here but they tend to treat these nowadays as uh, what they call wildings, feral species, introduced weeds virtually, unless that's actually been grown as a plantation. But yeah, a lot of South Island, New Zealand was more like what you see on the left here, grassland, Shrubland, not many trees at all. 
but we're heading through this Pukaki Flats area all part of the Mackenzie Plain it's called it's a big, big vast flat plain we, we crossed it going to Tekapo uh, a couple of three days ago and uh, now we're crossing it again this area is gated so we have to stop for the gates and push our way through here we are checked in at the Twizzle? Twizzle? The, maybe it's Twizzle Holiday Park on a hot sunny day, 25 degrees and it feels like about 35 if we we're in Melbourne and uh, Matthew and I are concentrating on the um, solar recharging rather than putting our tents up because the UV levels are too high Daniel's got his tent up in the sun I don't think he's going to lie in it though it's early afternoon what is it? Quarter to three. Oh, and Mom, Margaret's got an unfortunate mishap. She decided to scrape the edge of the bridge while she was riding across it, and her arm didn't like that very much. Such is life. She's all bandaged up. What do you think about the adventures, Margaret? Hmm? What's what your, I, yeah, what I your, think? your adventures with a bandaged wrist, bandaged not, no, elbow. No, not, not fun, not fun at all. I, I didn't think it would be as bad as what it was when I looked at it. A lot of skins missing, <sighs> raw, bleeding skin underneath. I didn't think it would have done that much damage, but believe it or not, I've only got a few grazes on this top there. That's all blood there. Lovely. So, um, I didn't think I'd have much of an injury on my arm at all, and I got a shock when I saw it. <laughs> Travelled a short distance across the road from our caravan park here at Twizel and uh, found this delightful river. Matthew's been for a swim in it, looking suitably cooled off in his wet clothing, lying there chilling by the river, and we've got some lovely rapids over there bubbling away. And, uh, Daniel doing some texting. And Margaret and I are just lying back. You'd have a paddle. Let's We've had really good weather. We've been very lucky in the weather. We've had some very nice campsites. This rather amazing lavender farm yeah. right by the roadside here on the way to Mount Cook here from Mount Cook village but the lavender farm might be a um, stopping point because they've got ice cream and nice views Across the east shore. Very uh, calm waters all through and the scenic glacial blue of the lake. Brilliant. Mountains all around, it's just awesome. Such scenery that you do not get in Australia. The great peak of Mount Cook. Now we 
we're going. What? Well, we stopped for lunch at this gorgeous uh, lookout spot. It's called Peter's Lookout or Tapataya Mahaka Lookout. There it is. And it's on the shores of Lake Pukaki, Pukaki which we've spent a couple of days hanging around. You can't rattle on the side of it. Yes, day before yesterday, we rode down a Twizzle yesterday, and now we're riding up the other side of the lake, heading for Mount Cook, which is off there in the far distance, that spire covered with ice and snow sticking up. You might just be able to make it out on that. About 45 kilometres to go to get up to Mount Cook Village with a bit of climbing along the way. Matthew's getting his long load trailer all organised, packed up. But, uh, meantime, my bike looks okay, except when you sit from the rear view because it looks a little bit like a Chinese laundry with everything hanging off the back. It's a great spot here, great view, a lot of people stopping. And it's a beautiful blue lake. Glacial blue, caused by fine particles of rock called rock flower that are suspended in the water and uh, give it that colour. You can even, if you look at Lake Pukaki on, on Google satellite image, you'll see the colour of it there. It shows up really, really blue compared to other lakes around the region. It's quite noticeable. You all right? What's the matter? Sorry. What? Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah, Matthew and uh, uh, yeah, yeah, it's all right. Then you've gone down there. Please don't this way. Yeah, it's wrong. This is Glen Tanner. Holiday Park and Cafe. A rest stop for us. Looks nice, looks nice. Coffee and a bite to eat. Coffee and a bite to eat, eh? And up there's the mountains. And this is at the north end of Lake Pukaki. 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 that right name wrong? It's Pukaki. And we're right at the north end where the Tasman River, which is over there in the far distance, enters the lake. I don't know whether you can see it on this camera, but it's a fairly big river across all these flatlands. And the mountains in the background, just awesome. Again, just awesome. About 20 kilometres to go to Mount Cook. We've just been at Glen Tanner for a nice coffee and a cake. Relax. Fairly flat right. Oh, look at that. Oh, look at that. There's Mount Cook. Oh, my God. Crossing Bush Stream. Right up in the mountains. Mm. Oh. oh, oh, that was a bit of a waster. We've got to go back down again.
in the far distance there I can just make out I don't know whether you can see it on the screen at all clearly but it's the Hooker Glacier in the valley below the uh, snow-capped peaks just above that little dark small dark hill you can see the ice of the glacier a nice little descent here oh we can enjoy it even though we've got 10 kilometers of climbing to do afterwards Glacier straight ahead in the valley. See the white ice. The Alpstrosian Trail here. Getting away from the main road the last five kilometres. Right on the valley floor. Uh, hill, there's some buildings at the foot of it, that's our campsite, White Horse Hill. And, and just behind it, the massive glaciers up on the mountain. Bloody amazing. What a landscape. This is the landscape we're facing. Just around there is our campsite. By that uh, little dark green hill. Green bushy hills around here with no snow on them are pretty bloody awesome too. Hill campsite really is a uh, motorhome city by the looks. G'day, how are you going? Good, thanks. Where have you biked from? Twizel. That's a good ride. So, how many k's? Seventy, today? maybe seventy-five. Seventy-five k's. That's not. Is that, that's not an e-bike, is it? No. No, no, no. Push it all the way. It's all what my own. Average about oh, 15. God knows. <laughs> but sometimes we were going. Sometimes I was in top gear down down the hill at 45, 50 yeah. kilometres an hour, and other times we were uh, crawling uphill at I reckon about seven. So, so where were you stopped for the gear. night? Here. Here, have you got a tent? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you got yeah. all the camping gear. Oh good man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what about you? you? You camping here? No, 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 we're just up there with these friends, yeah. Oh yeah. I love biking out here. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean that's a that's... good ride, that's a good ride. Because yeah. there are a few hills on that, aren't there? Yeah. yeah. Do you just feel like you've done a serious time. ride now? Oh yeah. Yeah, you feel stuck. I feel knackered. I'm ready to set up camp, cook our dinner. We've got, we've got a quick cooking one pot Primus, yeah. dinner that'll cook what up in a nice cold beer that would be nice wouldn't it, it would be nice but i'll live without i'll just nice cold water and No, 
Margaret spotted something. What have you spotted, dear? I think they might be They're alpine huge. daisies. They're huge daisies. beautiful day on the shores of Lake Pukaki and uh, up the valley there you can make it out again but in heads jutting out of the clouds is Mount Cook again just stunning to get such a view of mountains a couple of days running it was cloudy this morning very over thought we thought it might be overcast all day but it's turned out to be another beautiful day Stopping in at the Alpine Lavender Farm on our way back. Everything's lovely and lavenderish. There's lots and lots of lavender. Even people riding bikes in the lavender. My God. 